We're continuing our series on induction motors. What's on tap for this episode? Today, we're talking about inrush current of an induction motor. And uh, this is a very important topic. What's the opportunity of inrush current? Well, understanding inrush current is fundamental to understanding motor fault contributions and choosing the correct overcurrent protection. So we're going to help you understand how this works and Hopefully, you can translate that into better decision-making on your designs. What is inrush? Well, inrush is the current that occurs when you first apply a voltage to an induction motor. We have to go back to the fact that an induction motor is actually, it's not moving when you start. And so, to the electrons coming into it, it looks like a shorted transformer. In other words, the rotor is basically a transformer, the secondary of a transformer, with a short, and that's what makes the current flow in the rotor. But when the rotor is not moving, there is no generated back EMF or back voltage to oppose the current, and so it rises to a fault level. And it's a matter of how the motor is built, but it's typically uh, four to seven, six times the full load current. All right, tell us more about the inrush current. Well, the inrush current, as I said, was, you know, four to six times the full load current of the motor. And the National Electric Code actually uh, addresses this quite explicitly in a table, NEC table 430.7B. And that shows the locked rotor code letters and corresponding inrush current. In other words, the National Electric Code has gone from A to V in group numbers. They, they call them groups. And... If you look on a motor, you will see the NEC group designation for that motor. And typically, motors in the HVAC or building industry are a G or an H. That's very typical, and that's where the inrush current in the four to seven times uh, range is found. But they make induction motors that have less and more, and so it's important if you've got some special application with some special motor, to know what the group letter is and go to the National Electric Code to determine what the inrush is. And this is important when you're using software and you're trying to describe the inrush current so that you get your faults correct uh, for motor contributions. On that NEC table, you said it calls it locked rotor and not inrush. What's the difference there? Well, this it's semantics at this point. Remember, the rotor is locked, but it's not really locked. But the electrons don't know the difference. They rush in. They see the rotor is not moving. They don't know if it's locked or just not moving. It looks the same to them. So it's called a locked rotor, but it's also in rush, and it, it's only happening when the rotor's not moving. Looking at that table, I don't see any current, only kVA per horsepower. What's that all about? Well, the table is meant to be a little more universal, and so there, it's it's in units of kva per horsepower so if you know the horsepower of the motor it gives you the kva that you can expect for the inrush current and you have to convert it to current okay and when you convert it to current you're going to get the numbers that we've been talking about but uh, the table is attempting to be a little more universal so that it it doesn't have to know anything about the voltage of the motor when it says what the currents are is there anything being done about inrush current since it's such a large load yeah there are it's a challenge for electrical engineers to deal with inrush current, for sure. It affects the overcurrent protection. It affects motor contributions. It affects voltage drop. Uh, there's a lot of things that are affected by this high inrush. And most of the time, the motors are fairly small and we don't care. But as the motors get bigger, we do care. And so dealing with the inrush current is a whole subject in itself. And we'll talk about that in another chapter. All right, then with that, let's review what we talked about with inrush current today. Inrush current uh, of a typical induction motor is about six times the full load current due to the fact that the motor is looking to the electrical system like a shorted transformer and most of the load is inductive and a lot of current flows, but no work happens. And as the motor starts to speed up, it becomes more of a real load and starts to uh, actually produce power and the 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 total current, it drops because uh, you're getting actual work done out of it. Now, a more precise value of the inrush current can be found in the NEC table 430.7B, 
And these are described in kVA per horsepower. So simple conversion is necessary to get the amps.